Back to Drake. Brandon Ryan says he is hunting for the LeBron James logo man one of one. Yeah, I mean, if anyone isn't aware, Adam, you must be aware of all this action the last four nights or so. Drake has been in the chats on various breakers, Instagram live streams, and has been breaking several cases of Panini Flawless Basketball. I saw him doing some prism. I see him chatting, making the odd comment. And the hobby has literally gone nuts about this. <laughs> you know, everybody is all about Jake Drake right now. Lameem James has put out some pretty funny memes, kind of kind of having fun about the fact that the hobby is all starstruck, that, that Drake has started to uh, to to break. And, and I mean, it might be a big deal. It, it, might, it, it is a big deal, but the fact that, that it really comes out to how long will he be in this? Is he in this for the long run? And how much of it is he sharing and talking uh, and really sharing on his socials with his um, millions of followers? What are your thoughts on this whole this whole thing that's been going on the last few days, Adam? So if I psychoanalyze myself a little bit, it's funny because I spend so much time on cards, like which is our admiration for for athletes, right? I don't find myself as somebody who's starstruck, right? I work in an industry where I get to meet and talk with people who, who make just gobs and gobs of money. And the thing that's clear to me is that people are people, right? Like if I was talking to, to Drake, I'm not sure it would be much different than talking to you. And so I don't, it personally doesn't influence me at all. But when I think about what it does for other people, it is so clear that people are like, you use the word starstruck. People are dramatically influenced by... You know, when we when we look at our hobby and we think this is a sign that we are cool, this is a sign that we have made it, this is a sign that we are mainstream. People really care about those things and it influences values. So um, I think it'll be I think it'll be super cool when that card comes out. I actually hope he doesn't get he doesn't pull it and then he has to go get the thing and that there's that story that happens afterwards. I think that'd be great for the hobby. That would be interesting if he was actually buying on the secondary market. Now, you have to wonder if that's his angle. I've heard just by all the talk going on and watching some of the chat during these, these live streams on Instagram that he's a gambler. If he's a gambler, won't he stick to cracking wax and having the fun with, every, with thousands of people watching? Not that he cares about that because he's used to having millions of people, never mind thousands. Thousands is, is drops in the bucket to him of, of people. But... I mean, if I were him and I were and I was had a bit of a gambling mentality, I might just stick with busting wax and, and trying to find the cards myself versus going out and and really grabbing it on the secondary market. Again, we're it's all speculate. And there's been so much speculation about why he's doing this, what his motives are. You know, I see people posting in these chats like, hey, Drake, will you sell me this card? Will you sell me that card? Like like and, you know. No offense to anybody, but do you really think he's going to take time out of his day to start doing trades with people? Like, not on Instagram. I don't think so. Maybe if he winds up at a card show with a posse, but what do you think? Well, I think there, you bring up something interesting here. If this guy just buys all these cards and then goes and sets them in a box because he only is looking for the one big triple, that's going to break some hearts because people are going to really want some of those cards and maybe they don't find their way back into the secondary market. I don't know. Um, I think, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what his angle is. Your, your idea about gambling is spot on, but this is what makes one-on-one such a beautiful thing. If he really cares about the triple that it seems like he cares about, then whether he's a gambler or not, if somebody else pulls it, there's only one way to get it. Yeah, that's right. He'll have to go buy it. I exactly. You, you made a good point there about the fact that, you know, if he's not going to be active on the secondary market, which I don't think he'll be act an active seller, unless he just ships them all off to a consignment service, which, right. he, he, you know, that, that, that doesn't seem unlikely to me. Right. But if he doesn't do that, then, yeah, there are going to be lots of cards that are just sort of stuck away that no one's going to have access to. But, you know, it's maybe sad for some people, but that's the way the hobby works. It won't be that he won't be the first person to open up his boxes of cards put them in other boxes and just leave them for, for years, if not decades to be just uh, hidden away and inaccessible to anybody else. Let's go through some comments, Adam. We have a lot of them coming in. Uh, Brendan Ryan says he heard that the, the LeBron logo man has a million dollar bounty. Wow. Julian in the house. Good evening, Julian birds on the bat. Uh, T dot says he went through thousands. It's more like eight, eight X nine to a 10. Okay. What? Okay. Okay. T dot. Um, you went through thousands, so that must have taken you hours and hours, if not months. But good for you for putting in the legwork. 
Uh, maybe share your report because that would be very valuable to the hobby. Frankie says, good evening. Good evening to you, Frankie. Brendan says, don't think the market has crested yet. Jay Tillman, Drake broke 12, 13 cases of flawless. No, he's breaking the, the new product that just came out, and but he's breaking, it seems like dozens of cases so far. T-Dot says, Drake is bored. I don't think the guy's bored when he's going to NBA games, T-Dot. I think you're off your game tonight, buddy, but uh, keep him coming, keep him coming. Brendan Ryan, it's nice to see celebrities have fun in the hobby. I think that's true. It is nice to see celebrities have fun in the hobby, bring more attention to it. It makes it more fun for all of us. Brendan says, I'd like to see some more, some movie stars, car, some of their card collections. Yeah, it's always nice to see card collections of famous people, right? And let's see what WNBA says. She says, Drake heavily influences all of culture, so this may drive a lot more people into cards. If more celebrities get into cards and it becomes mainstream cool, you'll see another pandemic rush. That makes sense to me. You, Adam? Yeah, I mean, the more times that we have light, and this is something I've spent a lot, of, lot, a lot of time thinking about. Whenever a light is shined on something, we used to think of that all light is shining on, on things as sort of like hyping things, right? But sometimes the market just generally needs to be understood. And when, uh, when a celebrity goes out there and says, you know, somebody like Drake, imagine him explaining to the world, listen, there's a card of LeBron James. It has three logo mans from each of his three teams. Like that's all he'd have to say. And explain like that, that exists and I want it. And they're in these packs and I can buy a pack and it gives me a chance at it. The same as you like that drives people to go, Oh, I didn't know that existed. Let me go look at it. And the more eyeballs that we get because that light's shining on something that hadn't been shining on it before that influences how the market grows. And as we know, when the market grows, that gives us a chance to see, you know, like, it, like we've seen in the last two, three years, that it gives us a chance to see valuations change. And so um, I think it's good that that's out there. And I think it's good when people sort of become converted to the hobby. They love it and it becomes something that's like big and important in their lives. But a lot of times it's like a really short term thing. And so you kind of have to watch that, too. Yeah, no, I agree with all that for sure. Ramsey Welcome says, I think he's got a sales team set up to offset. He won't be active personally, but he has people that will. I mean, maybe, maybe. I, I guess, I guess we'll we'll just have to see what what transpires. I mean, it's all speculation. What is up, Richie Barone, the mayor of Canada? Always good to see you, my friend. Hits and chicks says trade safe to the moon. Thank you, hits and chicks. James Fertitta says Drake was opening cases with 4K in the lives. Nicki Minaj went live with 60K in her life. But the only difference there, James, is we're not talking apples to apples here. Drake went live on somebody else's. And I know Drake didn't go live. Drake only showed up in the chat. So he did not go live. If he went live, I think we would see that 60K that Nicki Minaj had absolutely blown away. He only was in the chat and he attracted 4,000 people. Wow. I don't know how many people Nicki Minaj would attract if she went in someone else's live chat. But we'll have to see. But again, he was not live or on screen. So... It's a bit different. Daniel Busby, welcome. Great to see you. Thank you very much. T Dot tells us that Drake is the king of the rap game. Definitely good for hobby. Yeah, that no doubt about that. T Dot. Skeppy says a pop three PSA 10 of any card could go many directions in price. To think we have a reliable mount multiplier is a guess at best. 100 percent agree with that. And Hits and Chick says, in my personal opinion, the whole Drake thing is way blown out of proportion. It might be. I mean, yeah. it might be. But you know what? The hobby, listen, we are a bunch of people who love cards. We love sports. We love our cardboard community, all our relationships. And when somebody of the, the stature of Drake starts to open packs of cards, just like we do, we look at that as like Adam said, it, you know, it helps us. It, it just helps reinforce the, I'll call it a fact that, it, that you know, it's not uncool rather it is cool cards are cool i mean i thought they were cool forever finally other people think so too most people watching here probably have felt the cards were cool for a very long time and now we're somewhat being validated publicly because somebody who is known to be cool like drake is also in the hobby now or at least for a while so okay yeah i think if i can just jump in real quick the thing that's interesting about that is that that people will buy in to this thing in a short-term way where it's like, oh, he thinks it's cool. Maybe it is. But then people just have to figure out whether they think it's cool, right? Because 
like like you said, I've I've thought cards are cool forever, right? And and again, I actually don't care what Drake or Nikki, whoever, I don't really care what they think. Like it doesn't really matter to me, you know. I just you've got you've got to figure out what you like. You've got to figure out what you want to collect, what you want to spend your time doing, you know, what hobbies you want to have. And and some of these people are gonna come and go, and we're gonna see all this stuff happen, but really the winners are the people who follow what they actually like. And they're not sort of like driven to and fro fro from just, you know, following what, what famous people do. And so I don't think that's anybody in this chat, to be honest, but if, if you, if you start a live, Jeremy, I'm far more likely to join that than if either of those two people we were just talking about start a live. So just, just no, I, I'd rather yeah. listen to you than those guys. Yeah, I, I probably feel the same way. Unless they're starting a live to talk about the hobby, I'm because I get to talk to you all the time, I might go listen to people <laughs> there. Like, and there we go. The Playmakers Theater that we were talking about earlier hits the board again with a new bid up to 180000 Going to go to some comments, and we're going to start looking at these cards. Enough about Drake. But, Drake, if you're watching, which I know you're not, welcome to the hobby, brother. Welcome to the hobby. <laughs> 